<laughs> Let's play! Whoa! Hello there, ladies and gentlemen! You all may call me Pharaoh, and welcome back to Let's Play Raging Loop! Last time we left off, we have now entered, and I guess now part of Yasumizu, uh, thanks to Haikuchi-san. So, right now we're just kind of slowly introducing ourselves to everybody and just trying to get acquainted. And uh, we open the door, and it's like, oh, I think somebody's here. <gasps> it's Shimi. The last time we saw you, you, like, disintegrated. Seeing the person's face almost made me say her name in surprise. Shiami Sarazawa. I couldn't save her. I couldn't fulfill my promise. But we met again, thanks to the strange looping phenomenon. Whether it was something to be thankful for about was another matter. Nice to meet you. I kept my surge of emotions under control and gave an amic amicable smile. But... Um... Just as she made that simple sound, a lone tear ran down her cheek. Oh, do I have something in my eye? Her voice was calm, but the first tear made wave for way many more, and they were both they were soon uh, streaming from both eyes. W what? Ah, uh, Kiori san, do you have a hand towel? Her reaction didn't seem to be anything more than confusion in her own body acting out of going out of control. Oh my, what's wrong? Here you go. I don't know. Do you have tear gas here or something? Perhaps the sh what? Shishinari are I'm making for a journalist is rotten. Hey, I didn't mean that. What what is it then? Menopause? Come now, you're too young for that. <laughs> um, sorry for acting weird. She wiped her tears. Her eyes didn't look good, but her voice was cheerful and carefree, just like in my memory. You're the person who suddenly ended up living here, right, mister? That was a word you used on strangers. Why had she cried? Yeah, am I that scary? No, 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 you look perfectly fine. It's just, well, a mysterious event. Oh, my name is Shiami Sarazawa. I'm a student back home for the time being. I know I made a poor, poor first impression there, but I hope we can get along. She bowed to me. She, she really didn't know who I was. Maybe her, maybe it's like a subconscious thing. Maybe she like deep down knows, but I, I don't know. Due to the looping phenomenon, dying had sent me back to the point where I was wandering around on my bike. It was something that actually happened, and I had to accept it, but it was also completely unreasonable. I didn't have any good way to reasonably explain it. Drugs. Was the looping centered around me? Was I really the only one who had memories of last time? It wouldn't be strange for there to be someone else. My memories were fragmented right now, and I often remember things only when it can, when uh, only when it counted. It could be that the others have forgotten almost everything, but still had certain fragments of their memories and feelings. I had to stop thinking about this. I couldn't have asked her to console me about the tragic end that hadn't even happened yet. I'd had a, I'd been barking up the wrong tree. If everything worked out, I hoped I can get close to her again. Love that depended on death, despair, and a suspension bridge effect that was better off staying in the realm of fiction where it belonged. We exchanged a few words, but I didn't have much time. I had to focus on getting a place to stay. Anyway, just like I said, I first went to Uematsu-san's house. Obviously, it didn't seem like there was any many people inside. I hesitated for a moment, but ended up knocking. Who is it? That was Miko's voice. Could she even understand me? I'm Fusachi from before. Fusachi from before, son? No, um... I am Haru Haru Haruaki Fusachi. Uh, is the old lady there? No. Oh, so I was off the mark. 
All right, see you then. Yeah. Uh, what? Onichan, Fusaki-san, Fusayuki-san. Wrong. Please, wait a moment. Oh, Uematsu-san. She told me to wait, so I did. Soon enough, the door opened up. I apologize for the wait. How may I help you? I'm looking for a Yamawaki-san. From how she acted, I, I thought she came to visit you. I haven't seen her yet. Looks like it. Alright, I'll be going then. Oh, uh, what did you need her for? Well, I'm gonna live here now, so I still don't have a place to, to live. You will live here? Yes. I need to talk about that. Oh. What does she mean by this? But you cannot be without a place to stay. Yeah. Prepare for the feast when the evening mists arrive. That made me flinch. Did it show on my face? The people of Fujiyoshi believe the mist is all is an ill omen. If it comes, we must clean our bodies, shut ourselves in, and go to sleep early. Cleanse, shelter, dream. That's definitely an interesting tradition. That was what I would have thought if I didn't know about the tragedy. Um, this might be a bit presumptuous, but I do know of one empty house. Huh? She told Miko to w entertain herself and took a key from her house. Instead of telling me more about it, she insisted on going outside despite my polite protests. I had no choice but to follow her. We passed the plaza and went down the hill. She tripped two times. It hurts. <laughs> Looks like it. I fall and hurt my head on the regular, so I'm used to pain. You really shouldn't walk around glass, grass like that in that attire. This is Inuematsu duty. Is it? The spider are bedroom women servants. That was a new term. Bedroom women servants. Women who serve you in the bedroom? That sure sounds sexy. And the spider's one of the guardians of the great lord Shinai. That reminded me. She may have told me that the Uematsu were a family of the spider. When the power of Yomi rises from the Saranaga, it is said to bring madness first and foremost. That was why the Uematsu of old had the role of protecting the dreams of the villagers. Hmm. Were they like the Night Watchmen or something? It wouldn't have been weird for a police-like force to still retain power in, in this day and age. But you'd f fall, you'd fall all this all, ugh. but you'd fall all the time at night. So you walk around during the day instead, huh? Oh. Uh... Was she all right? By the way, do all the heads of the village have roles like that? Yes. I'm surprised you noticed. I came here from through Kamafujiyoshi, and Haiguchi-san, well, he looks pretty powerful. The Haiguchi family are the monkey, protectors of the watering hole's flame. There was that term again, watering hole. They used fire when it wasn't allowed, huh? Yes, we are told they claim to run a watering hole, while in actuality we're teaching people to use fire. And they use this to gain influence as a source of everyone's food. What about Nasoto-san's family? They're one that had families too, aren't they? The Nasota are the crow. The Eve-eaters. I have no idea what that means. They inspect if a corpse belonged to a Yomabito or not. They perform autopsies? That didn't seem very important. They were actually the healers. They were the only ones who could use the Aconite, also known as Wolfsbane. Oh, okay. Masato's the family that made medicine. Wolfsbane plant, that's there's Aconite in the food, that's right, okay. Oh yeah, that was true. Well, 
But an autopsy was a medical procedure. And if they could use poisonous plants on top of it, they could have easily garnished, garnered a lot of respect. I see. What was the last one? The Miguruma. Right. I haven't met a single person linked to that one. The snake are the tower lookouts. The Uiwatsu aren't the lookout family. That doesn't really give me enough. Tower, as in watchtower. So, they're in charge of the military here? No. They used to build watchtowers and watch the stars. They made calendars, read the weather, and led the local farms. That role made them respected, and they eventually became Shinai-sama's priests. I see. We had our TB weather ladies now, but back in the day, astronomy and meteorology were linked to divination, leading many to consider them special powers that led them predict the future and bring good things in general. Farming was a building block of civilization. Having it was a matter of life and death, so it was only natural for those who offered guidance in that field to become leaders. Thank you for telling me. This place has such a rich, rich history, huh? I think I can grow attached to that. I see. This is the first time I have heard such words spoken. Really? It's pretty interesting, though. I never explained this to someone born outside of Fujiyoshi. Alright. She refused to go into detail last time. If we the village really was a good idea, huh? So far. Oh, look. We have gone all the way. Here it is. Yeah, we really did go all the way, huh? Sure takes a lot out of you. No, we did not do anything strange. Her speech was still odd. And hey, what the hell was up with her imagination? She could send my verbal curve she could send my verbal cue ball curveballs to another dimension. Anyway, there's a wooden house. It was much like the ones near a plaza, except a bit more aged. It looked relatively stable, though. Most of Fujiyoshi is actually the private property of the Haiguchi, the Nasato, and the Uematsu. Fujiyoshi used to be owned by the Miguruma alone, but now that extends to all the current heads serving the Miguruma. That was new to me. So, you're saying this place belongs to you, Rikaku-san? What? Oh, sorry for being so forward with you. No, I do not mind. But yes, this land is mine. A person lived here. Until recently. Who? Nobody told us about somebody else. Or, okay. So, has he passed away or something? Yes, it was a peaceful death. That sounded like a real blessing here in Yazumizu. Does that bother you? It is clean inside. I had been lying if I said I wasn't bothered, but I chose to take a look. She hadn't been kidding. The inside was shabby, and the wood was aged. But the floor was clean, and I couldn't see much dust. The tatami was new, though that meant it had to be changed. At least there wasn't some human-shaped mark on the floor. There was no furniture, but I could easily get a futon or something. But what about the bath? I do not think this place receives gas. Well, that's bad. What can I do if the mists come? You wish to be able to cleanse? You merely have to fill that pail of well water and wipe yourself with it. That's enough? Yes. I hear it was rare to bathe in warm water in Fujiyoshi. Oh yeah, because only the watering hole could use fire. Yes. That made sense. Anyway, I was not ready. Are you sure I can use this house? Yes. That would make all the daily cleaning worth it. Huh? Wait, you clean this place yourself? Yes. 
because taking in the corruption is one of the Uematsu's roles. Also, keeping myself occupied served as a good distraction. Did something bad happen? She fell silent. Sorry, that was insensitive of me. No, it was not that something happened. I was afraid of what could happen. She looked at the mountain beyond the valley. No, it was the valley itself and the Saranaga Rapids at the bottom. Back to the heads. Did the Migaruma still predict the weather and stuff? Part of me thought I might be prying too, too deeply. During spring and autumn festivals, they ask for abundant harvests, dance for them, and chant ritual prayers. I heard this was supposed to be based on what they did in the past. Thankfully, we've had no major droughts or famines. Oh. So, in a way, they have a perfect track record. Yamawaki-sama knows this well. You might wish to ask her. She would be pleased to talk. That seemed true. Oh, sorry for taking up so much of your time. Uimasu-san, thank you so much. I'll make it up to you. Uh, I also merely wanted to thank you for your help during my embarrassing accident. Wasn't she basically blaming me here? Lots of things happened already, but I hope we can keep uh, getting along well. If you think I can help, don't be afraid to ask. Fusashi-sama. Oh, and Sama doesn't suit me. You can be more casual. You don't have to use such polite speech. Oh. Crap. Fusashi. I, I can't. I can't. Fusashi-sama, I would like to ask of you the same. Please call me however you like. Was I actually raising some flags here? Was this was the game this easy? Wait, was the game this easy these days? Did she seriously fall in love over a bit of a help over a head injury? Was this a soap opera or something? Well, not that I was complaining. Then... Rikaku-san. <sighs> no, this was something else. She was just especially vulnerable to men. As a family head, she was probably either rever 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 revered from a distance or considered an enemy. Takumi did the latter. She'd probably never talked to someone who didn't care about those things. That actually made me feel kind of bad for her. Okay, then let's call each other Uematsu-san and Fusachi-san. Let's become good friends. Uh, friends. Yeah. I'd love that. In a part of the village of no one but us, we exchanged a deep bow. We Matsu-san then returned, and I checked the house for any holes. It seemed fine on that front. No monsters can get inside. Anyway, I had my place. Now, I had to get one from Ma Mamiya-san and Hashimoto-san. I tried to think of a way to encourage them to leave before the mist came, but all the things I could think of seemed unnatural. That meant my only option was the opposite, convincing them there was no way to leave, so they'd have to stay. Honestly, I did consider just letting them die. As long as I survived, I didn't really care if they did. But, that didn't sit right with me. I wasn't a good guy, but not doing whatever I could right now seemed careless. My ultimate goal was to escape the loops, but at the moment, all I could really do was prevent the tragedy before me. I'd think of something else if it just doesn't work out, but for now, I had no reason to abandon my humanity. That was why I returned to the plaza. I was still, it was still really empty, and the two journalists were probably working. This was my chance. I approached the left back wheel Hashimoto Shi's van. Reaching into my bag, I pulled out the hammer and nails I bought. I placed the tip of a nail against the tire and hammered it in. You could hear the sound of the air leaving. That had to be good enough. Then I did the same with the other rear tire, as well as the one on the front ones. 
There. After that, I had a random array of extra nails around those to make it look like a trap or something had run, been run over in the grass. They couldn't leave now. I already knew they didn't have anything that could fix the tires, and they couldn't get in touch with any road service until after the mist passed. If someone from Kamafujiyoshi came and picked them up, and they left without the car, that would have been fine, too. Not that I expect anyone to come, though. Now, I just had to convince them that they had to stay here. It was a really haphazard plan. It seemed like the locals uh, trapped themselves on purpose. I'd have to think of something to say about that. Anyway, I did what I could for them. I did, uh, I did what I could for them. Now I just have to wait and... Fusashi-sama. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, my heart almost burst out of my chest. What's the matter, Rikaku-san? Oh, the name again. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What's wrong, Uyamatsu-san? I am hungry, so I came to eat. That, oh, that, huh? Well, I was pretty hungry myself, too. Wait, there was something more important to worry about. Has she seen me? This is a large car. It is. What the hell's up with this pressure? Was it some Kamufujiyoshi head superpower? Was she waiting for me to confess or something? I had no choice but to think of a new lie. Oh, but looking at her red eyes makes me feel like she'd seen through my bullshit I spurn- any bullshit I spurn. Spun. Crap. Maybe I should just come clean and- I am hungry. Was she actually not thinking anything? Um, what do you think I was doing here? Huh? Searching for wood lice? Did she think I was as old as Miku? Miko? No. Look here. It's flat. Oh dear. See? It's got this inside. So long and thick. Look how deep this is. Oh dear. How forceful. Damn it, Tay! Hey. At least I didn't scare me to fr didn't scare me as much as the first time, but damn. I was I was gonna make a joke about how dirty like this wording was getting, but look. Hey, the brown haired man is taking Uematsu sama in broad daylight. Oh Man, what the hell's up with her appearances this time around? Okay, yeah, I, I couldn't lie, this conversation was pretty messed up. That's an outrageous misunderstanding. I'll go call for the journalists. What? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Hisako-san was completely perplexed. No, this is troubling. I still couldn't read his expression, but I could totally sympathize with someone being basically stranded in a place like this. How unfortunate. They weren't suspicious of me. So I just acted like an innocent, sym sympathetic bystander. Oh, the heartache. We were supposed to head back tonight. What are we gonna do? Do you have any plans? I'm fine, but what about you? Oh, my daughter's birthday is close. Oh, Nami-chan. Ow! Oh, the heartache. Oh, I had no idea he had a daughter. Or was married, for that matter. Ah, oh, the fact that it come as a surprise just made my pain worse. I mean, I shouldn't feel guilty about this. If I just ignored them, they would have been torn apart by a monster. Oh my! What do we do? Yasumisu has no cars in the first place. Mosato-sama might have something useful. Those words made me twitch. These tires are special, so that would be difficult. We do have a single spare, but... Let's contact road service. Aribisan, may we use the phone? Yes, of course. Right this way. They all return to the dining hall. 
have a bad feeling about this. I was left alone with a peculiar duo, but but then we were joined by a muscly, a muscly, muscle, muscly. Can't say a damn word. Muscly, my ah, whatever. Silhouette who come into the field from the field. What are you doing, Obachan? We Matsu and who are you? This is Haruaki Fusashi-sama. She went out of her way to introduce me, though she still couldn't leave off the sama. I'm moving here. I hope we can get along. Oh, you're the guy, huh? I'm Takumi Muro. A pleasure. You don't look like you're from Kamafujiyoshi. An outsider, then. That's rare. I'm sorry you ended up here. I really had to do something with that habit of showing sympathy for anyone who came here. Yeah, I came here from the city. I'm sorry I'm so suspicious and, and, and flashy. And I'll re dye my hair. Uh, oh, alright. That'd be good. Well, she hates that sort of thing. I don't really care, though. I care more about something else. As in... If you're useful in the field... Unlike Kamafujiyoshi, Yasumizu doesn't abandon its people, but we don't have room for those who can't earn their keep. While mentioning Kamafujiyoshi, he glanced at Uematsu-san. Well, you look like you have the bill for it. You can start by mowing the grass around the upper fields. Uh, but I was told to work at the dining hall. Oh my god, now he's pissed. What? You're working with Kaori-san? Oh, crap, I messed up. Takumi, you're a fine man. Just tell her how you feel. W what do you mean? I'm not thinking anything that outrageous. But she supports two grown sons and feeds everyone in her, with her frail arms. I'm going to kill any guy that tries to take advantage of her. That was plenty outrageous. Hey, what did you do to get her to take you? Spill it! It took a bit of effort to keep myself from lying and fueling the fire. Oh, um... Haiguchi-san from... Kamafujiyoshi, right? He sent me to work with her. Takumishi became uh, apathetic. Oh. I guess that's fine, then. Um... I'll try to become able to work outside, too, though. That's great and all, but for now, just watch. If we made you do too much, they might get our uh, get on our cases about it. Huh? What, they care about the kind of work people do here? They don't. They just want to be sure we listen to them. So, what are you all up to? Where's Kiyori-san? The journalist's car broke, so she went to make a call. Huh? Well, that's pretty bad. Can they leave? It's best to assume they won't have a fix today. Hmm. Awful. This is getting nowhere. Do you have any open rooms? That house was the only one I could give. Uematsu-sama, you gave Gansen's house to him? Yes. Houses die if people do not live in them. Take care of that house, will ya? A good person used to live there. Of course. Don't you dare use it as a place where you take advantage of Uematsu-sama. That cannot happen to her, understand? Huh? Um, uh, what? You two are like that? Uh, it's a complete misunderstanding, but it seems to keep uh, being taken as fact. I'd appreciate if it wasn't. We went off on a tangent. What do we do? I, I would have liked it if I, the newbie, didn't have to be the one making this conversation progress. Uh, I really don't think it's good if outsiders stay in Yasumizu. Neither side like it. Bachan, you got any free houses? Uh, the one I gave Miko-chan was the last one. The rest had holes or didn't have walls. You can't even shelter in those. Liar, there was a room in the door. Uh, yeah, there was a room in the dorm. Um. Oh. 
You sure suffer long. Go help out the old man. Oh, sorry. I got in the habit of sleeping in while I was away. By the way, Tai Bachan, there's one free room in the dorm. Chi Chan, you know the place was built by Yoshimitsu san. Yeah, he worked hard negotiating with the four families to get it built. He said he wanted for at least the children here to live in nice places closer to Kamufuji Yoshi. That's why he had the concrete stairs built on the hill and. Ah! Uh, <laughs> she started talking about this, the past again. Well, well, Fusashi, you see what kind of place Yuzu, Yasumizu is? I already knew. Anyway. I hope they can fix the car. This is bad. Just as expected, the road service would take a long time to get here. They'd be here sometime in the middle of the night if they tried to come right away. The mountain road was even more dangerous at night, so they agreed on a service coming in in the early morning, which led us back to the talks about where they'd stay. Though, by the time that discussion was over, Yamawaki-san, who was done talking, had left. She really gave us outsiders a cold shoulder, huh? Takumi-san tried suggesting they stay in their van, and I was surprised to hear they were receptive to that idea. Them being a man and a woman was one thing, but I was more concerned if the van had enough space for someone that huge and another person to lie down. Still, it looked like they were about to agree to just leave it at that, but that was no good. They wouldn't survive the night like that. So far, the only person I haven't met were the students who were in school, Kanto Makashima-san, who was out hunting since morning, and the old man who cried wolf. Since I met just about everyone, I chose to take my leave. It wouldn't have been natural if I tried to talk them out of that. I had to get places for them, but my only option was one I didn't have much faith in. Anyway, doorbell. Oh, you're the new one. What do you want? There's a problem that I think only a village head can solve. Well, I don't mind the sentiment. You you can knock off the awkward flattery. Why not act more like yourself? Was my politeness that insincere? Sorry. Now, about what, what I came here for. Hmm. Is it true that the mists are coming soon? The effects of my words had on Kiyonosuke Shi was impressive. He tried to act calm, but his wandering eyes made it clear he wasn't. What? Who told you about that? Who mentioned that superstition to you right when they when you just get here? Uh, Uematsu-san. He fell silent. The guy was easy to read. Someone else told me about the mists them themselves, though. The one who sent me here was uh, Shoji uh, Higuchi-san. Oh, Shoji. Well, he's one year younger than me. What did he say? I might have misheard it, but he said that there might be mists soon. There was no truth in my in my words, but they would become true when the mists came. But we must have said there there's something that had to be done if the mists come. There are people who are stuck here because their van has flat tires. I'm wondering what they should do. Oh, that's news to me. How troublesome. It is. What do you think? Early summer mists here, Yasumizu, happen only every decade or two. A decade or two? Well, it wouldn't be impossible for them to appear now, but I don't think I saw signs of it happening anytime soon. I see. Uh, by the way, what's so dangerous about it? Everyone seems so tense. When a mist comes to Yasumizu, someone someone always dies. Was that an okay thing to say? No, don't misunderstand. The mists you get here are far more dense than, do you, than any of you know. I hear they make you as good as blind. Well, I knew that. But yeah, I couldn't have imagined mists that dead. <sighs> Excuse me. Unless I saw them for myself. That's why the people here were taught to stay indoors whenever that happened. But you have fools who still go outside and fall to their deaths or something. I see. Did you see the destroyed construction site not far from here? That was a project run by my family, but it ended up in the, when the mists led to the on-site deaths. 
Seriously, they could have pulled out sooner, but the overseer was too strict. I felt stupid for ever considering crazy theories about some Saranaga illness. That mist was dangerous in a, in of itself, and that made me for that made for a good official reason to stay indoors when it came. He seemed to believe the official reason and thought it wouldn't kill him. If he actually knew about the true dangers lurking in the mist, he'd do everything he could to leave Yasumizu. He was from a head family, but he didn't seem to know all the secrets. She, on the other hand, must have known something. Ooh, where the hell are you learning so much? Damn. I'd love to learn more, or find out more, but... Hmm? Wait, hold on. He just told me something weird. The mists led to the on-site deaths? Did you see the aftermath of the landslide uphill? It's been like that ever since the Nasato got to work in a place eight years ago and it collapsed. They were all too freaked out even to clean it up. I ended up digging out the workers' corpses and burying them. You know, I was told that Takumi-san buried the bodies. But if it had happened in the mist during a Feast of the Yomi Purge, didn't that mean he should have been present during the feast? From what I could tell last time, the mist scared the people here and drove them to panic. Kanzo Makashima, she hadn't hadn't reacted at all, while the old old wolf guy had said that wolves were coming or were coming. It was likely they'd experienced a feast before, but I didn't know what had happened to the other people, or what I'd even do with that information. One thing I could say was that the survivors either killed or sil or silently approved of killing people. She and me could be one of them, or and so could the students. Even if I couldn't connect all the dots, it was entirely possible. I had to keep myself together. I had many things to think about later, but for now, I had a goal to complete. And yet the people at the main house... Uh, say, Masato-san? Hmm? You said that construction site is yours, right? Right. What of it? Is that prefab usable? For what? I just thought it would be a better place for the troubled outsiders to stay at, to stay at. Hmm. After thinking for a moment, Kiyonosuke she returned inside. I expected him to say something like, "What? Why would I, a village head, solely my hands of Yasumi's problems, or something?" So this came as a surprise. Kiyonosuke she came back shortly. This should be it. The previous head of the family brought it here after the incident, and just as I expected, it was the key box. It was in the key box. Oh, thank you very much. Wait! I didn't say I'd give it to you. In fact, why would I, a village head, solely my hands of Yasumisa's problems? And there it was. You have a point. I'm sorry. Eh, uh, I'm joking. I didn't say I wouldn't give it either. Wow, what a pain in the ass. Unlike Muro or Sarazawa, you seem to know how to behave around the heads. Yasumizu and Habana or not, I value such people. We village heads are responsible for maintaining order in Fujiyoshi. Thank you very much. Oh, so he believed in the concept of no noblesse ob oblige. Hmm. Shame he didn't have the ability for it. First, I had to check if the place was even usable. The equipment and materials were all gone. The only thing of note here was a sink in the, uh, on the wall. The flooring was cold and a bit sandy. But with a bit of cleaning and a futon, it could be a decent living space. There was no running water, but if we placed a water bucket here, whoever was living here could easily wash themselves. Hmm. Unfortunately, I don't have keys 3 and 20. And actually, I don't remember. I don't even know what keys I have. Let me check. No, I, I'm missing the the butt and like eight onward. I'm missing. So that's quite a bit. That's twelve keys right there, I believe. I'm missing three and one. Okay, so that might take a while to get, but but it makes me wonder what choice that would have been here. You know, 
Hmm. Anyway, I guess we'll just return to the dining hall. But it also makes me think that something special is at the prefab. Like, what were we, What can we do once we get those two keys? Hmm. And now I had one empty living space. Getting the other, the dorm room, was even harder. I didn't even think I could force it at this stage. However, it was still a better option than just wandering around looking for alternatives, uh, alternatives that may not even exist. This would be a real waste of time if it didn't end up saving them. I wasn't, a, I wasn't about to stop trying, though. It was still just a bit after noon. Honestly, I was a bit hungry. But there was a strange, powerful reek coming from the dining hall. I had no idea what they what what could have caused this. Was it a toilet? No. It was more along the lines of rot. Animal rot at that. Did someone already die? My memories had made me forget the situation was still peaceful and I dashed. Suddenly a dense wall rose up before me. Uh what? Ow. I was pushed away. Yeah, see, okay. So that's the second uh, thing we've seen. Somebody wearing that. Uh, I spaced out for a moment, but then I realized I bumped into a local hunter, Kanzo Makashimashi. You're the one, eh? This was the first time I'd seen him hold his gun in his hands. But I was even more troubled by his face. I was pretty sure I'd seen old lady Tai wear something similar to the first time. Or Tay. I keep saying Tai, but I think it's Tay, but I don't care. All that happened later made me forget about it, but... Man, was it weird. Sorry. There was a weird smell, so I was wondering if everything's okay. Well, uh, it's Shishinari. Huh? Well, that's Shishinari boiling. They're feeding, they're feeding the journalists. Oh, yeah. Kisako-san was, was here to eat something strange. Be careful, boy. All right. Um, may I have your name? Makashima. And he left. The bundle he had in his left hand told me he'd only been here to get his lunch. He was as tough as I remembered. That chest made it hard to believe how old he was. What a hunk of a man. That thought made me seem like some love-struck teen girl. Anyway, that clean that cleared things up. The smells caused by cooking. I gathered my resolve and went inside. Oh, where were you? I had things for you to do. Oh, Kiori san glared at me. Crap. I had I had to make up for the points I'd lost. Um I'm so sorry. I had business with Nosato-san. Business with him? Did Higuchi tell you to give him a message? No, um... Mamiya-san, Hashimoto-san, can I have a moment? Besides the one in charge here, and that sleepyhead, he also had a journalist who were busy taking photos and jotting down notes. I was impressed by the professionalism being able to get back to work right after a problem was solved, although it actually wasn't. Sorry to bother you while you're working. Uh, Nasato-san said it's not good to spend a night in a van, and he gave me the key to the prefab. Oh! What? That blackhead, I mean, Nasato-san did that? Well, it was nice to find out how she usually called him. Apparently there's one more room, too, so why don't you ask if they can open that up so you can spend a night under a roof? Hmm... Well, I appreciate the sentiment, but I don't want to force anyone to give me a room. Of course she didn't. That was the normal thing to think. Kiori-san, we really should open the dorm. Losing to Nasato-san would bring shame to Yasumizu. Hmm. Well, I won't say anything about that, but... Yes, even if there weren't any... Uh, any if, even if there aren't any uh, bad people here, I don't feel good about letting a young lady sleep in a car. Kiori-san, can we have lunch? And the most important person ar 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 around joined the scene. What? 
Nasanta san gave me a key. It's for the prefab. But still, not one of them can rest with a roof over their heads. Oh. That. I wasn't explicit about it, but she instantly understood what I was getting at. But that place is... I don't mind having a new neighbor. By the way, what kind of place is the dorm anyway? That is a place for the children who will soon leave Yasumizu. To live in Yasumizu means to be a part of Yasumizu for the rest of your life. But that doesn't apply to the children. That makes it the only special place here. And the people of Kamafujiyoshi silently agree. Oh. So this is just another way Kamafujiyoshi exerted power over Yasumizu. I could understand why they didn't want to mess with it. But I knew from experience that it wasn't an insurmountable obstacle. They'd open it up for an emergency, but tomorrow will be too late. And I didn't really have a good way to convince them that, um, that this was indeed an emergency. It's fine. I'm used to sleeping in a car. You can use a prefab, Hashimoto-san. That car is more than enough for just me. Not to mention you're the only one doing you're the one doing all the driving. Shouldn't it be the other way around? We're talking about the prefab uphill, aren't we? I'm not sure I want to let a woman sleep there. As we pondered. Excuse me. Hashimoto-san actually spoke up and walked up to Tyson. Can I help you? If you have a proper room, could you please open it up for her? She is a tough lady who can handle work in the field, but she is still unmarried. As her partner, I don't want her to do anything she wouldn't. She shouldn't have to. I will thank you in whatever way I can, so please. He bowed. His large body bent in two, but Taesan still had to look up to him. I understand, but... Whoa. Taesan was on the verge of giving in. Hey! Fusashi! So you came back, huh? Why were you out when Kiyori-san was making food? You got some nerve leaving when she needed your help. Oh, Takumi Nichan, perfect timing. Huh? What? Perfect timing indeed. He was the best person to convince Taesan. And in the end, she agreed. The word unmarried meant a lot to her, apparently. She seemed to become more considerate of Mamiya-san Mami after that. One of the reasons for this victory was the pressure emitted by Hashimoto-san's massive presence, and the other was the fact he presented a reason that resonated with her. And then Takumi-san joined the scene and gave her the final push. Hmm. This wasn't exclusive to Yazumizu, but finding a compromise in a community without, without common interests was really difficult. It was especially hard when you couldn't give proper reasons for your words. They'd started to suspect I was a slacker, but I said that I was called by Nasato-san, and though it surprised them, they believed me. As a result, I had to make up a story about how about how he was shy, but actually considerate of everyone, which is why he called me. After all, I couldn't let them think I decided this by myself. After we got the keys from Tyson, the two journalists and I left the dining hall to prepare our living spaces. The dorm room was clean to begin with. There was gas, water, and a futon. Exactly how I remembered. The house I'd be staying at was clean, too. All I had to do was get a futon from the butt dining hall and fill the pail of water. The prefab, though, took a while to clean. Takumi-san brought the cleaner pieces of tatami from the abandoned shacks here, which made it a relatively livable space. Well, if we're staying here, we might as well experience the local daily life. Shame I won't be able to make an article out of it. They seem to be satisfied with that reason. I hope we can work in a safer place next time. Sorry. Most of my gigs are like this, aren't they? Oh, but this is better for me. I have insurance, and it's far safer than a war zone. Keep it in such places? Huh, you did more legwork than it looks, or would, I b would have you believe. But you are a woman, Kyo-chan. 
I keep telling you not to mention that. There are no genders while we're working. Sadly, dangerous places are riskier for women than men. Well, you know, I can't get any better jobs or a man. It's rough, huh? The relationship was just that of a good business partners. Mamiya-san was a passionate journalist, while Hashimoto-san was a senior who was worried about her and helped her out. There was a decent balance here. That's unexpected. You're good looking, so I figured you'd be more popular. Flattery won't get you anywhere. Oh, believe me. If I was less pathetic, I'd gone for you without hesitation. <laughs> what an honor. How old are you, by the way? 24. Hmm. And I'm about to enter my 30s. I feel really bad. Hey, Mamiya. I, I'm 30, so, you know, I'm, I'm just being stupid. Ugh. It feels weird coming out of my mouth, too. Like, sometimes I don't believe my age. And I'm like, ugh. I hate time so much. But, c'est la vie. Oh, come on. Unmarried 30-year-olds weren't, weren't rare in this day and age. Though, I preferred women who were a bit more bothersome. What's this tub? Oh, it's to clean your body. But we'll only be here for a day. I was told it's a custom here. Hmm. Can you tell us more? All right, this is a good chance to share info with them. Presenting it as info I heard from Uematsu-san and, and Kiyonosuke Shi, I told them about what would have to be done when the mist came. I couldn't sound too knowledgeable, though, since I was a newbie here, but I was able to imply that there was a supernatural danger involved. Mamiya-san was extremely intrigued and quickly asked for extra info, like the stuff about the forehead families. I did my best to mention only what I find out this time around, but I couldn't help worrying that I would say too much. Hmm. Interesting. That's so Shinto-like, though. I wonder how it was passed on. Strange Tori, families and guardians to their names, a custom to cleanse only when a mist come. They don't seem too hospital to guests, though. What a... Well, wait, that's the wrong person. Wait. Who, who said what? Well, never mind. It's the same person. Never mind. What a mystery. How did such unique customs survive in such a remote farming village? Was it even more peculiar back in the day? It really does look like this is your calling, Kyo-chan. Oh, uh, apologies. Anyway, we have places to sleep in and know what to do if the mists come. So let's get back to work. You're satisfied with the dorm, right? Then I'll use this place. If you want, you can use a cabin downhill. This prefab is pretty cramped. Don't worry, I can sleep anywhere. And you're going to live here, aren't you? You should get used to your new home as quickly as possible. Hmm. Oh, he had a point. Also, I'd borrow the place from Uematsu-san. I didn't have the right to or to lit. Oh, that's a little error. The right ought to let them just like anyone use it. Oh. Hmm. Interesting. Another choice that requires number 16 key. So obviously we have agreed. I'm assuming one we're going to say like we persist or we disagree or we push him to use the cabin while he used the prefab. But it just makes me wonder like how are these choices going to affect everything? But really we're not going to be able to know anything until we, uh, you know, See it? Crap. Where's the, uh... Hmm. I guess I can't I can't go to the other side because I don't have the, uh, the two keys, but... Yeah, it's, it's making me question, like, just how big these branches are going to break off, but we'll see. I mean, all in due time. And actually, speaking of time, this is probably a good time to go ahead and call it here. Next time, we'll just pick the only choice that we can for the moment... And next time, we will see what else is going to happen. I, I think for the most part, we've nearly met everybody besides um, the three students. I think that's about it. And after that, I mean, I'm assuming now it's it's going to be a 
at least I think it's going to be a slower buildup now. Sure, we know, we've seen with our own eyes just how crazy this can get, but now that we're on a different path and we know what's kind of to be expected, I feel like the game may take its time with the character building and just things like that. Now, I'm still curious to know that when these myths come and I'm assuming we're going to have the feasts and all that, who's going to be killed and who is, who are going to be the wolves? Part of me would like to believe like it's still going to be, you know, Tay and Yo, um, Yosunaga, but it could change. I don't know. Either way, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be, that's going to be for next time. But yeah. So, as usual, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time for Let's Play Raging Loop. Love you all so much. Have a great day.